Welcome. So before uh, we get really comfortable in our seat, I just want to spend um, very little time on our seated posture. So um, lean to your left. S and with your left hand, uh, place it on your uh, right inner thigh. With your right hand, hold your sit bone. And then simultaneously turn the thigh down and widen the sit bone. Then lower the sit bone back down. Lean to the right. And with your right hand, hold your left inner thigh. Go get, re get really under and get grab the sit bone, the left one, and then turn the whole thing simultaneously. Now widen your seat a little bit to get a little arch in the lower back. Then root the sit bones and sit up tall. So uh, some years ago, I, um, I was on a pretty strict diet. I was a vegetarian raw fooder. I was um, eating a vegetarian raw food diet. And uh, I, I chose to eat this way because um, I really believed in the health benefits. I believed that, um, you know, the, um, the impact it had on the environment, on the, on the world in general, like the, the energy I was sending out eating this way. And for a while I was feeling good. But actually after a while, my body started not feeling so good. And uh, yet I was ignoring that. I just keep ate, kept eating this way because <coughs> I really believed, I held on to that belief. And um, finally, I actually, after more time, I got sick. And that moment when I got sick, I realized that I was stuck. That I was stuck because I obviously, there was something I didn't know about eating and the way I was eating and how to get my body into an optimal balance. There was definitely imbalance. And that was the moment where I surrendered and said, I don't know, I, I don't know. There's something I don't know here. And this, um, this surrendering and saying, I don't know, um, in yoga, we call that adhikara. Adhikara is Sanskrit and it really, it, lit, it means studentship or beginner's mind. It's this idea that you know, we are willing to go and revisit what we know and open ourselves up to expand our knowledge to the fact that there is more that we can know. And um, at the core of all growth is adhikara. When we are stuck, we don't grow. So, you know, we can come and practice yoga on the mat, but it does not guarantee that there is any growth. It can just be a practice. What we have to do on the yoga mat is to ask ourselves this question, where am I stuck right now? What, you know, we all get stuck from time to time. It's just what happens in life. But those moments are opportunities of growth. So if we're willing to ask ourselves this question when we practice, we, we're doing the yoga, we do the yoga. And that's, that's the practice. That's why we come and we, we practice to be, to get better at asking ourselves this question. So today when we practice, this is going to be the focus of the practice today. Adhikara, studentship, beginner's mind. So place the hands now in front of your heart and close your eyes. And just feel the breath. In the breath, the breath itself is, is the embodiment of everything that can be known, the potential of everything known. So by turning inside, by breathing, we tap into that potential that we all have, that it is at a, the core of our nature. So each time you inhale, Create a little expansion on the inside. Let the breath cleanse you, sort of clear out. And then as you exhale, it's like an emptying out, releasing anything that you're aware of right now that could be in the way of your growth right in this moment. In the heart, is the potential of all growth as you embodied, the potential of all knowledge.
We will chant now three ohms and our invocation three times. The chant itself is the reminder that we hold this potential inside us. The potential to grow from our yoga practice. Let's take a deep inhale and chant OM three times. Prabanchaya Shantaya Niralambaya Tejase Om Namah Shivaya Gurave Sachetananda Muartaye Nish Prabanchaya Shantaya Niralambaya Tejase Last time. Om Namah Shivaya Gurave Satchitananda Murtaye Nishprapanchaya Shantaya Niralambaya Tejase Lower your hands and slowly open your eyes. Please come to stand. Stand with your feet parallel. So there's a little space between your feet. Bring your heels under your sit bones. And just let your, your arms dangle. And just feel the foundation first. So every time we come to a pose, feel, we've, I want you to feel the connection first. So spread the toes a little bit so the foundation widens. And you can feel the four corners, the big toe mount, little toe mount, in and out of heel, pressing down evenly. This is a way to express your willingness to connect with this place that holds all potential knowledge. This place that is the divine itself or the universe that holds everything together. So keep that, breathe into your back body and lift your heart and then inhale, exhale your, ar inhale your arms up and just exhale your arms down. Breathe into your back body as you inhale. Just feel an opening and expansion and then exhale the arms back down. One more, inhale. Exhale. So David and Cindy, bring your big toes in a little bit. So if you're the more parallel, in one more time. And exhale, beautiful. A hand, bring your hands to your hips and spread your toes and lift them up. And when you spread and lift your toes, you'll feel that the energy starts to move from the feet up, in, up the legs into the pelvis. So they, their legs get a little more energized. So when we come to the mat to practice and um, we, we step into this potential of all knowledge, we surrender into adhikara. It gives us this, um, it doesn't mean that you have to give up what you know. You can still have confidence in what you know, although you also are open. So when you draw up the legs now, I want you to feel very confident that you know what you need to know to be here, to be in this pose. The legs start to work more, the, the top of the front of the thigh is more energized, and you feel this pulling of energy into the pelvis. This is an energy we call muscular energy, and we're gonna focus on that in the practice today. Then keeping that, 
Now inhale the arms out and up. So you stay, you hold on to the confidence of what you know. It's not like we become victims because we surrender. But once we have that confidence, now we can surrender the heart and open ourselves up from the pelvis. I want you to extend through the leg bones back into the earth. Lift the heart and extend through the fingertips. So the extension happens in the core lines of the body, through the bones, armpits back, head back, heart up. And this energy is called organic extension, organic energy, and it expresses this willingness to surrender, how you surrender yourself to what you don't know. Then exhale, fold and touch the floor, Uttanasana, standing forward, bend. Inhale, step your right leg back to a straight leg lunge. Keep the back leg strong with confidence. Lift the back in a thigh and lift the back heel so the energy moves from the heel up the leg into the pelvis. Good, that's your confidence. That's your muscular energy that connects you to what you already know. Then that gives room for you to surrender the heart. So from the pelvis, extend out through the leg bones. Soften the front knee, push through the back heel and let the heart center right at the base of the shoulder blade, just soften down. Good, switch sides. You can jump switch or step switch, whatever you wish, good. So Cindy, uh, move your hips back a little bit so you come more into the back leg, actually. Maybe we'll just move the blanket away, that's good. Come up on the fingertips and push down. So there's a lightness. Lift the back in a thigh, the top of the thigh, away from the floor so the back leg gets stronger. You draw in from the feet with confidence, square the hips more to the front. Then from the pelvis, now extend out and surrender to what can't be known. A lot of these poses we just do over and over. Push into me, David. Push, yeah. And, you know, we, we take them for granted to some extent. But if we really connect inwards and surrender, there's something new to know. Step back, downward facing dog this time. Great, guys. Look at your hands, spread your fingers evenly. And this takes a little time here, just a few moments, and breathe and move your hips and your knees in the way, any way you wish. Just feel yourself. You've got to take some time to feel in the poses so we can sense where am I stuck. Maybe it's physical, maybe it's mental, maybe it's emotional, we don't know. And then breathe into the back body, breathe the waistline fuller so you feel an, a reaching out through the back, good. From the fingertips, now claw the floor and draw energy up the arms into the heart. With confidence, you draw in to what you already know. Then from the heart, extend out. Push your hips back towards me, Sherry. Just the hips, good. Not the hands, the hands stay, good. Inhale into plank pose, good. And lower down. You can do the knees first if you need to, knees down first, or come all the way down onto your belly. Interlace your hands behind your back and lower your forehead down. Click the toenails into the floor. And pause and wait. So just take a breath in. So maybe, maybe it's not so easy to know where you're stuck. Maybe you don't feel right away. We don't know. So you can always connect back to the breath first. Breathe the waistline long, so from the hips all the way up, up under the armpits, create more space. Ribs get more open. Then inhale, lift the head and the shoulders, Shalabhasana. Lift the hands away from the floor. Good. Breathe here. Excellent. The more confident you are in the legs, the higher up the heart comes and can surrender. So you surrender to the heart and the heart surrender itself out back into the world. Exhale your forehead down, hands by your uh, chest. Tuck your toes, downward facing dog. Bend your knees and you can stop, stop, hop or step yourself forward. Uttanasana, standing forward bend. Inhale the arms out and up and exhale the arms to the sides. Inhale the arms out and up, stretch up. Exhale, fold and touch down. Good. This time take your feet as wide as your sticky mat. Interlace your hands behind you back. 
Again, lift your hands away from the sacrum. Take a moment and pause. Let's breathe. Breathe the, the back ribs full, good. Now spread your toes and pull energy up the legs again. Keep this, the legs strong with confidence. Then keeping that, lift the hands away from the, the sacrum even more, draw the shoulder blades on the back and stretch out. From the pelvis, root the legs and bring the arms a little closer to the floor behind you. Surrender that heart. Surrender to what can't be known. Not about the pose necessarily. Maybe it's about you. That's even better. Hands to your hips, I think anyway. Lift the elbows and inhale. With an open heart, come back up to stand. Exhale, bring the feet in under your hips again. Release the arms and inhale, stretch the arms up. Exhale, fold and touch down. Inhale, step the right leg back into a straight leg lunge. And exhale, soften. Come up on the fingertips if you're not already. Push the fingertips into the floor so the left side of your waistline just can lift a little bit away from the thigh. Good, that just creates more space. So in order to receive more knowledge to grow, we have to create a little more space. So when that, that waistline lift, it just creates yummy space on that side, good. Keep the legs, the back leg particular, strong and the front knee soft. Now lift your left arm to the sky and twist. From the pelvis, extend through the leg bones. Curl your heart open and surrender and extend through the crown of the head. Beautiful, exhale, touch down. And step back downward facing dog. Jacob, turn your hands out as midget. Second side, step the right leg up between your hands. Inhale and exhale, just soften. Take a moment and breathe into that waistline, particularly on the right side. Then pull in from the feet, legs strong with confidence. Now open the right arm to the sky and twist. As you twist, see if you can keep the hips square to the front as much as you can. It's challenging to stay connected to what we know and have confidence in that when we are asked to know something else. Maybe we're being asked to reorganize what we already know. Doesn't mean we lose it. Take your hand to your hip, David. And then lengthen out here and yeah, and I'll head back and soften. Good, exhale, touch down. Step back down with facing dog. Bend your knees and you can step or jump yourself up between your hands. Inhale the arms out and up. And exhale the arms to the sides, good. Take a moment and close your eyes. Just feel the breath. Great. Open your eyes. We're moving into some Surya Namaskars now, sun salutations. Place your hands in front of the heart. Take a deep breath in. Let it clear out anything that feels stuck right now, whether it is physical, mental, or emotional. Let's allow the breath to fill you up. And then as you exhale, you just empty out whatever is not so helpful right now. And release the hands. Inhale, stretch up. <clears throat> Exhale, fold and touch the floor. Inhale, lift the head, legs strong, push the top of the thighs back and then from the pelvis, extend through the leg bones. Grow those legs longer as if you were going to push through the floor. Now extend your heart out, extend through the crown of the head and ex extend into what can be known. You offer yourself, when we, when we surrender ourselves, 
we give something up. Exhale and fold. Step the right leg back, straight leg lunge. Exhale, plank. Inhale, and then exhale, lower down. You are more than welcome to lower the knees first, always. Cobra, small or bigger. No matter if you go up high or stay down low, press the hands down. Inner edges of the hands, root them fully into this potential. Good, Jacob, now relax here. Head back towards me. Good, downward facing dog. Inhale, step the right leg up between the hands. Exhale, the back leg to meet the front and fold. And inhale, the arms out and up. And exhale, the arms to the sides. Inhale, the arms out and up. Big toes in a little bit, Diana. Exhale, fold and touch. Good breathing, I love it. Inhale, lift your head and extend your heart. Root the legs and extend your heart even more. Exhale, fold. Step the right leg back on an inhale. Then exhale, soften. Inhale, plank. Pause. Press the hands down. So part of muscular energy is hugging the midline. Spread your fingers evenly and now hug the arms into the midline where the heart sits. So you have confidence in what you know that's inside your heart. There is always something you know. Now keep that heart soft and lower all the way down. Inhale, come forward. And exhale, soften the heart. Tuck the toes, downward facing dog. Bend your knees and step or jump yourself forward. Good, inhale the arms out and up and exhale the arms to the sides. One more. But before we do that, let's just actually just review what we're doing today. So we're working with two energies, muscular energy, organic energy. They are um, opposite but complementary. Muscular energy draws from the periphery to the core makes the muscles hug the bone and hug <coughs> more to the midline. It's an energy that integrates and connects. So it, it, it expresses this um, confidence we have in what we already know. Organic extension, organic energy, is the, uh, it creates space and openness in the body. It moves through the core lines. So it, come, it moves from the core to the periphery, moves through the leg bones, spine, all the bones, and expands out from the midline and through the muscles. And it expresses this willingness to surrender to what can be known. Are there any questions about that before we move on? Good, last Surya Namaskar. Hands in front of your heart. Inhale and soften, and exhale and empty out. Then inhale the arms out and up. Exhale, fold, touch down. Inhale, step the right leg back, straight leg lunge. Plank, come into plank. Hug the arms to the midline, hug the legs in. You hug in with confidence to what you know. Now heart soft and surrender to what can't be known. Lower all the way down. Good, Lynn. Swipe your heart forward. Cobra. Downward facing dog. Very good. Press the inner edges of your hands down more, Serena. Yeah. Don't move the hands, just a thumb pad and index knuckle. Good. Step your right leg up on an inhale and then exhale. Soften. Step the back leg to meet the front and fold. Inhale the arms out and up and exhale the arms to the sides. Turn to face the door, please, and take a wide stance. Is it getting warm in here? Yeah. I'm putting on the fan. Is that okay? Fan on. <laughs> no one has to suffer. We can even open here, I think. Good. Turn your right toes out and bend your front knee. Hands stay on your hip for a moment. Warrior two. 
We're going to do some standing poses. Good. So Sherry, turn your back toes in a little bit so your back foot is parallel. Now spread your toes and just feel the foundation. So you want to really stay open and connected to everything that can be known because in that is also what you already do know. So from that, now draw up the legs, energize the legs, and pull the energy into the pelvis. Then press the feet down and drag them energetically towards each other. Keep that. And now from the, take your arms out in a, a T, look over your front fingers. And from the pelvis, now extend down into the earth again. Make your legs longer, lift your heart, shoulders back, and just open and surrender to what can be known. Breathe into the back ribs. A lot of you can open your right knee a little more to the right, so the knee is more over the ankle. Very good. Bend your front knee even more. One more breath. Beautiful, hands to your hips and stretch the front leg straight. Then inhale and turn the feet in the opposite direction. Bend the front knee, hand, arms out, warrior two. Breathe into those back ribs. So we, we, we want to lean back into this potential. So it's not something, a potential can't really be seen. It hasn't been manifested yet. So the back body is a representation. So really expand your back ribs the best you can as you breathe in. Good. Get your shoulders more over your wrists here. Now from, uh, from over your hips, of course, sorry. Now from your feet, draw up into the pelvis. This time, soften your groins back a little bit. So there's a little space and now root the tailbone and from the pelvis, extend down, surrender the legs back into what can be known to see what you can learn. Soften here, lift your heart and just release back, there you go. Exhale and bring your hands to your hips, stretch the front leg straight and turn your feet uh, parallel. Good, Prasarada Padottanasana. Inhale and exhale, fold and touch the floor. So if that doesn't happen easily, if you have to bend your knees here, uh, come up on two blocks. Actually, Cindy, let's put you up on two blocks. Just to... Place your hands right under your shoulders and come up on your fingertips. Just go outside so the mat is not uh, in the way. You can even come up on the fingertips on the block. Spread your toes. And now pull the feet in energetically in towards the midline so those inner thighs fire. Push the top of the thighs back. Good. Now breathe the waistline away from the floor and root the tailbone. Then extend from the pelvis all the way back down into the earth. Surrender the heart. Extend it out first and then bend the elbows to the side and fold. So Lynn, you can walk your hands wider apart, apart and then also David can do that to give yourself more space. Very good, Cindy. Let's soften here, yeah. What we learn can't always be, you know, it can't never be forced, actually. It comes when it comes. All we can do is open to receive it, really. So there's no point in pushing. Very good, hands on your hips, and then inhale, come back up to stand. Exhale, step or jump your feet together. Turn around towards the front of the room and come up uh, towards, actually, yeah, towards the front of your mat. Have two blocks nearby. You might need them, you might not. Is this yours, Sherry? I'm just going to put it here. Okay, inhale your arms out and up, and exhale, fold and touch the floor. Walk your hands a little bit out in front and just look at your feet and make sure they're parallel. Now place your hands flat on the floor. If this is difficult, use the blocks. There you go, good. We're going to do stand split. So Serena, walk your hands out even more and bring them more in front of your toes, yeah. Take a moment and breathe here. Just breathe your waistline away from the floor. Just feel the fullness inside. Good, keep that and now lift your right leg up behind you. Turn the toes down. So first the leg just want to go out. 
that's okay, but now we want to turn it in, we want to contain the energy, we want to hug into what we know. So that's good, um, uh, Diana, flex your foot more. There you go, good. Spread your toes and hug that leg to the midline. Now lift your head, soften your heart. Now keep that and lift the left heel off the floor. Then from the heart, extend through down through into the earth, through the arms and out through the back heel. Exhale, lower the right leg down. Very good. Second side. Use the block, see if you can get your legs straighter that way, maybe. Good. Left leg up. Push the top of the right thigh back to stretch the, uh, the standing leg straighter. Might not go all the way straight, that's okay. Turn the left toes down. So the left, hi the left hip will go down towards the floor as well. Now spread the toes and hug the leg in towards the midline. Good, Amy. And then from the heart, extend down. You're gonna lean into your hands here so there's more weight in the arms. Heart soft, good. Extend through the heel, exhale the leg down. Very good, you guys. Just hang over and Uttanasana standing forward bend. Bring your hands to your hips and inhale, come back up to stand. Turn to face the door again. Take a wide stance. So when you take a wide stance, just uh, look down at your feet and make sure they're parallel. Good, now turn your right toes out again, bend the front knee, and this time rest your forearm on the, uh, right above the knee, palm up. I think you all got that one. So Serena, uh, bring the forearm, not the, yeah, like that, good. So just to have something nice to rest on, Parshva Konasana, extended side angle. Take a moment and soften. Breathe into those back ribs, good. Now from the feet, pull in. Make the legs strong, confidence in what you already know about this pose. Now take the top shoulder back, head back. Don't do anything with the arm yet. Good, you can push your right arm into, the, the, into your front, uh, front leg as well. Now groins back a little bit so there's a softening of the groins here, opening the, to the back body and then root the tailbone down, swing the arm, left arm along the left ear, palm down. Good, and now staying strong in the legs, extend from the pelvis down the legs and curl the heart to the sky, extend up to the top arm, lean back. So when we receive this knowledge that allows us to grow, it just feels yummy. To grow is participating in life. It's, it just, we feel alive. Exhale in, and inhale, just come back up to stand, sorry, and then stretch the front leg straight and turn the toes in the other direction. Bend the front <coughs> knee. Just take a moment and soften. So confidence, it's like a trusting, that we dare trust in that we do know something. We don't become a victim of surrendering. We hold on to who we are. So Jacob, line your front heel up with your back inner arch. So see if you can move the back foot instead of the front. You did it already, so it's okay, but next, on the next side, good. And you, Diana, turn your front toes a little bit in. Rest your left forearm, palm up. Take a moment and connect back to the breath. We want to be inside the heart. The breath pulls us in. Then pull the feet in, spread the toes, and draw energy from the feet all the way up into the pelvis. Then groin soft. So you move the groins back to soften them. And then that creates a space. Now in the space, root the tailbone. Extend the top arm along the ear. Take the armpit back, lean back, head back. Keep the back ribs full as you spin the heart open, surrendering to what can be known. Again, not necessarily about the alignment in this pose or, or you know, maybe all you, you're knowing now is that my inner thighs are not as strong as I thought they were. That's okay, that's a good thing to know, but something is also known on a deeper level. 
Maybe you won't realize it now, but in time. Inhale, come back up to stand. Beautiful. Step or jump your feet together. And then inhale and exhale, fold. Touch the floor, just stretch out here. So come up on blocks, Jacob, and then um, see, push the tops of the thighs back more so you can stretch the legs a little straighter. Ask yourself, where am I stuck? Good, place your hands on your hips and inhale, return to stand. Take a wide stance again, triangle pose. La yeah. Turn your right toes out, take your arms out in a T. And inhale, lift the heart. Exhale, lower the right fingertips down on the floor on the outside of the shin. You might want to block here if you can't reach the floor. Or the other thing actually you can try first is to take a longer stance. So actually, Jacob, yeah, you're good. Take a longer stance, just a little bit, yeah. And then push the top of the thigh back. Bring the right forearm to touch the right shin. There you go. So you can actually push them into each other a little bit, just creating a connection here. It's gonna help you fire up the legs here. And keep that, groins back, top shoulder back, lean back, and now root the tailbone, and you can extend the top arm to the sky, but keep the shoulder back. Now from the pelvis, extend. Extend the legs down and extend through the crown of the head. Spread your fingers and just don't bend the elbow. But yeah, there you go. Lean, press your head into me. Beautiful. Exhale and inhale, one more breath, and then inhale, come back up to stand. Turn the toes in the opposite direction, arms out. Inhale and exhale, lower the left hand down on the floor or the block, so take a wider stance, Jacob, here. Good, Amy, beautiful. So press your left form into your shin more, Amy, so the, yeah, so the leg can come more center. Yeah, there you go, that's beautiful. Sherry, come up on your fingertips here, and the Lynn too. So if you're not on your fingertips, come up on your fingertips. Why do we want to be on our fingertips? It creates a sensitivity. So when you ask the question, there's more of like a moment-to-moment -moment adjustment that comes from being sensitive you get an answer quicker. Now energize the legs from your feet, pull in to the pelvis, then saw, keeping that, soften, soften the groins back, keeping that, root the tailbone, and then keeping all of that from the pelvis, extend down through the leg bones, up the crown of the head, and curl the heart open. Surrender into potential of all that can be known. Lean your head back a little bit. Good, inhale, come back up to stand. Exhale, turn your feet parallel and then step or jump the feet together. Turn to face the front of the room, come down on all fours and sit back in child's pose, please. Let the big toes touch, knees apart. Extend your arms out in front and then lower your forearms down. Is the temperature a little better in here now?
should. And Jacob, let your elbows drop to relax. Let's a couple more breaths here. Okay, slowly inhale and come back up to sit. Okay. We're going to go uh, do a handstand practice now and we're going to move to the wall. Okay, so um, can I use you to demonstrate with me? Okay, come on over here. So we're going to use, uh, let's use your mat. So everyone, if you would please come on this side of Amy. So we're going to do handstand. I'm going to help you. So take downward facing dog, please. And just stay there for a moment. So first you take, you know, she takes her time, gets, gets settled in her body, and uh, it's time to, you know, ask the question. We don't ask the question like we're expecting an answer. It's not, it's just like an opening to, okay, let's see what happens in this, this time. You know, in this practice, we, pose, we practice the same poses over and over. And there's a reason, because we do, it goes deeper. We get more, we know more every time. So good, so she has a beautiful uh, down dog. Now walk the feet in and pause. Soften at your heart, good. Now she's, claw the floor with your hands and now with confidence, draw up your arms into your heart. So hold on to what you already know about this pose, good. Now lift one leg up, keep the arms strong with confidence and then kick up. Good. Up against the wall. Good. That was good. Confident, right? F flex your feet and hug the legs to the midline. Now, from your heart, you're going to stay confident in your arm. And from the heart, you're going to extend down into the earth through the arm bones and extend up as you surrender your heart back up uh, 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 to what you can know in this pose. What, what new, what something new that ex uh, is unfolding for you. It's beautiful. Come on down. There she goes, good. So come back to down facing dog. Thank you, Amy, that was beautiful. So, I don't know if uh, all of you are kicking up, but there are uh, certain, several ways you can practice. So walk in again with your feet and just bring one leg up, your kicking leg, good. And just uh, uh, focus on bringing, uh, lifting the left heel now and just come up, yeah. And then see if you can just lift, the, yeah, like that. Don't, don't come all the way up. Actually, that's okay. Actually, why don't you let me show this? You're, you're good. Thank you so much, Amy. So this is like, she, she's a very beautiful practice. She kicks up, no problem. If you're still working on that part, you know, you come here, soft heart, confident arms, heart surrender, and you walk in. And maybe you're going like, okay, I don't know. So you can just practice just getting both feet off the floor, keeping the arms strong. You, it, and straight, so you focus on straight, keeping the arms straight with confidence, heart soft. And then just maybe you get, you get both feet off the floor for a moment. That can be your practice. Or maybe even just soften here and walk in. Soften, soften. So there's a couple of different ways you can practice. Are there questions about this before we do it? Okay, let's do it. I'll talk you through the first time and then you'll do a couple of tries on your own. Thanks, Amy. So we all start in down dog. Make sure your, your mat is all the way up. So Jacob, move your mat all the way up. Good. Just in down dog, just take a moment and, uh, you know, breathe. Breathe into the waistline. Spread your fingers evenly and claw the floor. Make sure the inner edges of your hands are rooted so there's a full connection to your own potential, to what can be known. Good. Now keep that, hug in from the fingertips, draw up into the arms, armpits, armpits left. I meant, I meant, sorry, draw up into your heart, of course. Armpits left, good. Draw the shoulder blades onto the back more. Now keep that confidence and walk the feet forward. Then soften the heart again. Good, now take one leg up and kick, or maybe just you want to lift the left heel and see if you can get both feet up, good. If you get up, Flex the feet, hug in with the arms and the legs. Good, Jacob. So you're a little tall here, so you're gonna hit the wall maybe. Um, so when you hit the roof, you can come a little bit away. And when you hit the roof a little bit, you just sort of, you can just push into that. 
because you're tall. That's it, Diana, good. Now, hug in with your arms, confidence. And then from the heart, surrender. So extend up through the heels, good. Grow the pose, expand, open to what can be known. Beautiful, you guys, good, Serena. That's it, good, Cindy, good with the arms. Now lift your head and look down instead of uh, towards your feet and soften your heart. That's it, beautiful. That's it, Sherry. More, hug in the arms in, good, Lynn. There you go. If you need a spot or anything, let me know. Otherwise, just do a couple more so when you get tired. Take child's pose. That's it, David. Good. You got it. Good, Jacob. Yeah, it's a little challenging for the tall guys in here. I'm sorry. <laughs> they hit the roof. <laughs> then all, everyone finish up and come to stillness. Good, Diana. Flex your feet when you're there and extend from the heart. <laughs> Bless you. Even though we know what we know, sometimes it can be challenging to surrender because we're not really sure, is it worth it? We don't know what we're surrendering to. It's a potential, but it's, it's worth it because you grow. It's not like what I knew about eating back then, it's not that I don't know it now, I've just integrated it differently into my life. Good. Inhale, come up, and let's bring the mats back into the room. Come to downward facing dog once you're set up. So we can start to think of advanced practice in a little different way, perhaps. We can start to entertain the idea that maybe an advanced practice, yoga practice, is the ability to surrender moment to moment in a pose. Step your right foot up between the hands. Parsvottanasana, lower your left heel to the floor and turn your left toes at a, uh, your left foot at a 45 degree angle. You're gonna shorten your stance or walk that back foot forward. That way you can square your hips. So if it's difficult for you to square the hips, walk the left foot to the left. That's it, Serena. Now, uh, good, uh, good there, Diana, with the front leg. You can take a slightly shorter stance, David. Uh, I meant longer, I'm sorry. Longer towards me, there you go, good. Take a moment and breathe. And spread your toes. Take a shorter stance, Serena, even shorter. And now from the feet, pull in. Press the feet down and energetically pull the feet in towards each other. So they're not gonna move on the mat, but you're gonna feel the whole inseam of your, leg, of your legs energize. Square your hips more to the front. Now push your left, left fingertips down to the left side of your belly and waistline can lift. And there's more squareness to the front, good. Keep that, push the top of the right thigh back. Groin soften and now put tailbone roots down, waistline lifted and now extend through the legs and all the way out to the spine. Bend your elbows to the sides and soften the heart. Or if it's hard for you, if you completely lose the shoulder blades, just stay uh, straight with your arms. Good. Breathe. Step your left foot to the left. There. And now come with me. Deep Ujjayi Pranayama. Keep pushing the top of that right thigh back and extend from the pelvis down. So you root yourself more fully into your own potential of 
or the own, your potential of what can be known. Beautiful. Step back to downward facing dog. Just feel the difference. A growth is then opening, just like a hip opened, a shoulder opened. It's alive. You feel more alive. Now step the left foot up between your hands, right heel down, right foot at a 45 degree angle. Good. So Cindy, walk your right foot more to the right and forward, shorten your stance a little bit. So Diana, you have a little bit of too short of a stance. There you go, good. And you have uh, Jacob take a shorter stance, even more. Yeah, and now uh, turn your back toes more in. Good. Push your left fingertips down and lift your left waistline away from the floor. Are we in the same leg here? No, we're not. Pull up from the feet into the pelvis. Push the top of the right thigh back. Now send your sit bones back. You'll feel a little arch in the lower back here. Now root the tailbone. Lift your head and look out in front of your mat for a moment. And as you, as you keep all of this, extend from the pelvis through the leg bones, heart soft. So you just extend your heart out in front of you. The heart energy. So it softens and then the head can follow. So when we surrender, we say, okay, you know, I might believe something in, in my mind. I want to believe something, but maybe my heart is going to tell me otherwise. Lift your head a little bit, Sherry, and soften. Good. Step back, downward facing dog. Lower your knee. Let's take a quick child's pose here. Open the knees. Big toes touch. Elbows release. So you really relax here. Want to take those moments to let go. Bring your forehead on the floor. How's that? Does that work for you? Good. I think so. Excellent. Come to downward facing dog. I'm going to do Vashistasana side incline plane. So you're going to be um, weight bearing on one arm here. So that arm, you got to really draw in with confidence here. So you protect yourself. When we hold on to what we know, it's also we want to open ourselves, but not so much that we completely forget who we are. So we're going to go to the right side first. So uh, uh, claw the floor with your right fingertips. So turn your right hand out a little bit, Sherry. And draw energy up. Lift the right armpit away from the floor. Now roll onto the outer edge of your right foot. The left foot can either go in front of you by the hip or you can have it the left leg straight on top of the right. Take the left hand to the left hip first. Good. Now draw up from the right hand with confidence. Now flex your feet and make the legs more confident. Lift the hips. Good. Now take the top arm to the sky and extend from the pelvis. Surrender. Open the heart. Armpit back. Head back, Jacob. Head back. Good. Exhale. Touch down. Very good. Second side, take a breath, walk your feet forward, uh, Cindy, and just Cindy, sorry, and push your hips back, good. Now claw the floor with your left fingertips, draw up with confidence and keep it, come uh, onto the left outer edge of your left foot, flex the feet, either put the right one on top or in the right foot in front. Now right hand to the hip, draw into the pelvis from the feet with confidence, lift your hips, shoulder back, head back, and from the pelvis now surrender. Beautiful. Touch. Open your heart and then touch down. Great. Downward facing dog. Very good. Beautiful, you guys. Oh, 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 oh. Bring your right knee into your chest and bring it forward and out to the side and then lower to the floor for pigeon prep. Tuck the left toes under. Come up on your fingertips and just take a breath into the back ribs. 
Now push the floor away from you and lift your hips away from the floor a little bit. So both hips, keep the hips lifted. Now press the knees down and drag them towards each other. So you're crossing that midline. You're hugging into that midline with confidence. Hips square to the front, beautiful. Now keep that and walk your hands forward. can come onto your forearms, so extend the arms all the way out, but you're gonna keep hugging the knees in so those hips stay square to the front. Good. Groin soften back, tailbone moves down, and now from the back of your pelvis, extend out through the back leg and the front knee. Lift the front side of your belly up towards your heart and surrender as you fall forward. So forward bends are such natural surrender poses. When we fold over, it's, it's obvious that the heart just drops, it opens. But still, we have to stay confident in what we already know. We're not letting go of ourselves, what we know ourselves to be. We're just willing to look at it from a different angle, perhaps. We're just more willing. Good, walk the hands back. I have a little story for you about that actually. And take down with facing dog. So let's do child's pose before we do the next side. Great, let's come to downward facing dog, please. Second side, bring the left knee up into the chest, forward and out to the side. Then lower it back down on the floor. The back leg comes straight out from the hip. So you can look over your shoulder there, the right one, and check. And then come up on your fingertips and push the floor away again and lift your hips a little bit away from the floor. Then pull, pull, keep the hips lifted a little bit, but push the knees down and now draw in, draw the confidence into the legs. Now keep the hip, this will square the hips to the front. So you're going to keep the hips square to the front and now walk the hands out, keeping all of this. Good. Now from the pelvis, you actually, you're going to soften the groins, soften the groins, and then root the tailbone. So there's an opening and a stability there. And then from the back of your, from the deep inside your pelvis, now extend through the back heel. You want to extend so much, you want to surrender so much that you could actually lift the knee, but you're not. You're going to keep the right knee down, but you're going to really extend energy out through that back leg. Good, David. Then from the pelvis, extend the spine long and soften at the base of the shoulder blade with each exhale. So the challenge is that when we get good at something, with there's something we know really well, we can actually get so stuck that it's really, you know, like a know-it-all. So, you know, even when I was um, eating in this particular way and it really wasn't working, I really was so much in, in my head about it that I was not willing to recognize it. So it's always a challenge to know something. It's like finding that place in the middle where we know something well, but we're also willing to say, not so sure. Maybe there's something that can, I can always learn. I think, you know, the really sort of masters in yoga, if you want to call them that, you recognize them because they're very humble. Very good. Walk your hands back, downward facing dog, then come into plank pose and lower all the way down onto your belly. Good. You can do the knees first or come down. Now prop yourself up on your forearms like you for a sphinx pose. <coughs> so we're going to do um, a thigh stretch here. Ardha Bikasana. Bend your right knee in. And then hold the instep of your right foot with your right <coughs> hand. So go to the other side, Diana. Take the arch, good. And take a moment here and just breathe into the back ribs. Just feel an expansion. Keep that. And now 
push the foot back into the hand first and root the right knee down. Then some of you hug the knee more to the midline. Yeah, like Serena, Amy, good. Now keep all of that. Now drag the right knee forward so the top of the right thigh lifts a little bit away from the floor. So it integrates more, it's more confidence here. Then keeping that, now extend from the pelvis down through the leg bones and move the right heel closer to the outer hip. Spin your elbow to the sky if you get close to the hip there, good. There, Lynn, that's beautiful. Now press down into the left forearm so you don't hang in that left side, but now from the pelvis extend out through the legs and lift the heart and spin the right side of the torso to the front. So you want to align more to the front here, good. That's beautiful, Lynn, good. Good, Sherry, everyone, beautiful. Exhale and release, so good. Second side. Did anyone feel low back issues here or? You did? Okay, good, I'm gonna come and help you. Bend the left knee in, take the instep, and stay really rooted on that right forearm as well. And breathe the back ribs full, spread your toes on the, and, and the left foot and kick it back into the hand. Press the left knee down and then drag it forward, keeping all of that so the left thigh lifts away from the floor. Keep that and now bring the left heel closer to the outer hip increasing the thigh stretch. So you just go to where it's not a pull, where it's really an opening. Now from the pelvis extend. How's the low back? It's okay. okay. No. Okay. So just uh, get your tailbone down more. Lift your heart and spin your left side of your belly to the, uh, to the front. So the, the torso gets more aligned, the shoulders are more aligned to the front. One more breath. How's that? Does that help at all? So really get this tailbone to go down. Exhale, release. Lower your head to the floor and turn it to one side. There was this... Um, you know Hanuman, the monkey god. He wanted to become the disciple of the sun, to learn everything that the sun knew. And he, um, he asked the sun, but the sun said, you know what, I really don't have time for a student right now. I'm like so busy going from one side to the other side of the sky. There's just no way I can take a student right now. But Hanuman was so determined. He said, I'll do whatever you want me to do. Just take me. So finally the son, he had, you know, begged and begged and begged and finally the son said, okay, I'll take you, but you have, to run, you have to run in front of me, but backwards. So you have to follow me in my path and you have to run backwards to learn everything that I can teach you. So he did, he was willing. And um, he was willing to surrender and do whatever it took to get more knowledge about himself, about the universe. Good. Now come up and sit. <clears throat> Actually, no. Let's stay down on the floor. I was, I was a little too premature. Sorry about that. Forehead down. Place the hands by the chest. So come to the forehead, Serena. Good. Place the toenails on the floor on the mat and spread them out and press down. Good. We're going to do Cobra Pose, Bhujangasana. So now take a breath into those back ribs again. Expand. So place your hands on the floor uh, by your chest, um, David. Yeah, there it goes. So when you come up, before you come up, really root the inner edges of your hands, the, the index noggle and the, the thumb pad. They have a tendency to want to just disconnect. So sometimes we're not really sure. We have to stay rooted to that potential. Now, keep all of this. Lengthen on your next breath from the hips and all the way up under the armpits. I want you to feel expanded and expansion. Armpits more hollow. Good. Now press the hands down and on an inhale, lift your head, shoulders back, heart open. Begin to stretch your arms straighter. But each time you go, use the, go with the breath. Follow the breath and root the hands down. Shoulders back. Top of the base of the neck relaxes. Beautiful, Lynn. Good, one more breath and exhale, come down. So there's really no need to come up high. 
the only thing I want you to think about is keep the shoulders back, outer shoulder blade rolled onto the upper back, and then the heart open and soft. Let's do this one more time. Root your hands, uh, Serena, index knuckles down, down, more flat finger, there you go. Forehead down, when you're ready, inhale and come up. Claw the floor, press the inner edges down, and then slowly lift out, lift out of your pelvis, from the pelvis, root the legs first, and then lengthen the heart out as an, as an, as an, as an surrender. You su offer as you surrender. Good, press your inner edges down more, Jacob. Inner edges of your hands, inner edges, good. Exhale, lower down. Very good, you guys. Better. Release your arms. And press back up and sit on your heels. <clears throat> so the next one is a back bend. And uh, it's a really amazing opening from, from the, for the front of the chest. So, um, I'm going to show it. So we're going to come from down dog. I'm going. This pose is called the wild thing pose. It's a, it's a somewhere between Vasistasana and uh, a deeper back bend. It looks like this. From down dog. First, I'm. I just. I just tune in. I just connect back to that place of all potential knowledge. Then I move forward and roll onto my right arm and my right foot. This time I step my foot behind. So the top leg goes behind. Now I claw the floor and I draw up my right arm into my heart and my pelvis. The energy pulls up. It's that confidence. I hold on to myself. I know what I know. Now I'm ready to surrender to what I can know. So I pull in from the feet as well, lift my hips, arms and legs are strong. And now from the pelvis, I extend out, get the top left arm back, armpit back, head back. And now I'm just open and ready to receive. I keep extending. It's both an inner offering and an outer offering, a surrender. And then exhale, we come back down. And uh, any questions? Okay, good. Let's try it. Let's do it more like it. <laughs> Downward facing dog. <laughs> so remember, the top foot goes behind you. Let's start on the right side. So turn your right hand out a little bit. It's going to rotate your arm a little bit, so it's just easier to, if it's for it to integrate. Now claw the floor with your right fingertips. And now turn onto the outside of your right foot. Left foot behind your right leg. Good. Claw the floor and draw up with confidence into the pelvis. Then flex your right foot and draw up that leg. Lift the hips high. Now you're connected. You stay confident in who you are. Now you can surrender. Good. Breathe. Head back, Jacob. Head back. There you go. One more breath. And exhale, come back down. Second side, beautiful. Claw the floor with your left fingertips and roll onto the outside of your left foot. Right hand can go to the right. Let's bring the right hand to the right hip first. Now flex, so bring your right foot behind you, Jacob, good. Now flex the left foot, claw the floor with your left fingertips and draw into the pelvis with confidence. Then lift your hips high from the pelvis, surrender, surrender the heart, L armpit goes back, good. One more breath and exhale down, beautiful, that's gorgeous. Okay, lower your heels back down on the floor and swing your legs out in front. Bring the soles of the feet together for Baddha Konasana. Hold the ankles, please. Yeah. 
Just breathe for a moment. Now, lift with your hands, lift your ankles a little bit, so even your knee lifts a little bit away from the floor. Now that way you pull more energy up the legs and into the pelvis, that's muscular energy. Good, you can lower the, the feet back down. You, they don't lift the feet, just lift the ankles. The feet stay down, ankles lift, there you go. This will energize the shin muscle, good. Now keep that, so the knees are a little high. Now soften the groins down towards the floor. Tailbone roots down, keep all of this, and now from the pelvis, extend through the leg bones so the knees open up, lift the heart. Good, open the front of the chest, but breathe in to those back ribs. You can stay here, or if you're more flexible and you wanna walk the hands out, you can, but be careful that the, the head doesn't override the heart here. You wanna so stay soft in the heart, open and ready to receive. Sort of bring what you know, it's there, it holds you, but it's not sort of leading the way. And then just breathe. Just one more breath. Good. Keep your right, sorry, your left knee bend in and extend your right leg out, or actually you have to come out of it first, and then extend the right leg straight. Janusha So the left knee, you're gonna move it over into your left groin. <coughs> when you move it into the left groin area, the knee can open a little bit wider than 90 degrees. If you were sitting on a blanket in the previous pose, you will in this pose too. Flex the right foot, good. Just bring the hands in between the legs first and press the legs into the floor. Then walk the hands on either side of the front knee. Good. Keep that arch in the lower back, so keep softening the groins down. Pull in from the legs. Now push the right fingertips into the floor so the right side waistline fills up and lifts. So you connect back. You always want to connect back to this place of potential, potential of all that can be known. Then keep that and now walk your left fingertips out. It can stay right under your knee or shin or if you're more flexible, you take the foot. It's not so important. What's more important is that you keep rooting your sit bones, lift the heart and let the heart extend out. This is also a twist. So that's why when we lift the left, the, sorry, the right waistline more and get it, get it more full, you can bring the left waistline forward a little faster. Sorry. So breathe and lengthen out. Keep breathing into that right waistline. And surrender. What are you noticing? There's no obligation in yoga, so it's not like you come to the practice and you know, you get stressed about you don't have an insight or anything. Don't worry about it. It's gonna come when it's coming. It's just about feeling alive. Good, inhale, release. Second side, extend the left leg out. Bend the right knee in. Bring the hands in between the legs first, and then just root down through the foundation. Take a breath here. And bring the hands on either side of the left knee. Spread your toes. And draw back with confidence. Sit up tall, good. Push the left fingertips down. So you push the floor away on the left side. Lift the left waistline. And then pour yourself over as you surrender. Root those sit bones, groins are soft, tailbone down and you extend through the legs and you can pour the heart over, out and over. It's like as the heart pours out, it also receives.
That's it, Jacob. Beautiful. You're good. Spread your toes more. Just one more breath, guys. You place your left fingertips on the floor. Yeah, and yeah, that's good. A little bit more in front, and then push the floor away so this side lengthens out. And inhale, release. And exhale, extend both legs straight. Bend your left <coughs> leg in and, and place your right foot on the outside of the left knee for an uh, automatic drasana twist. Again, hold, um, hold the knees with both hands. And then uh, bring your foot out for, so your sit bones can root. So don't bring your bottom heel under your sit bones. So you sort of sit and hike up. You want both sit bones to touch down. So you two, Amy, can get, bring it out a little bit. Good. Now pull a little bit on the knee so you sit up more tall. Press um, the right foot down into the floor. So you want to stand like in Tadasana on that foot. And then it's going to really pull you to the midline. Then keep that. Bring your right fingertips behind you, wrap the left arm around, and begin to twist. Now, before you go deep into the twist, breathe your waistline away from your right thigh so you fill up that back body. Then root the sit bones, lift the heart, and now twist. Take some deep breaths. Root this foot down, yeah. Each time you breathe, it's an opportunity to ask, where am I stuck? Sometimes we just want to notice maybe the opening is not there yet to get unstuck in that area. But the first step is definitely the recognition. That's the yoga. Exhale. Inhale. And exhale, soften the base of your neck. Good. Inhale, release. And exhale, swing the legs around so you can do the other side. So the right leg is on the bottom, left foot is on the outside of the right knee. Try a blanket here, Jacob. Just sit up. Get this to Hold the knee with both hands and press your left foot down. So again, just to make really clear, when we talk about the four corners, big toe mount, little toe mount, outer heel, inner heel, those are like four important points. Just press down like you were standing on that foot. Then draw in, sit up tall, keep that, and now soften the groins down. Bring your left fingertips behind you. Wrap your right arm around or hook. If you're more flexible, that's totally fine. Root the tailbone. Breathe the waistline away from your left thigh. And now lift the heart and spin. So you pulsate here with the breath. Each time you inhale, you pull more to the core. It's more connection with the confidence. And then as you exhale, it's that surrender. That emptying out. Exhale. Good. One more breath. One more breath, actually. Mm. And exhale, release. Very good. Shake the legs out. And come to all fours. Bring your right fingertips outside your mat and come up and cup shape your hand. So like that, yeah. I don't know if you all can see me here. I'm going to walk over here. But you're all doing it good. We're going to do twisted child's pose. So with your um, left hand, thread it under your right arm and bend your right elbow and bring your left shoulder down on the floor. Tuck your toes under on the balls of the back feet, or the, not the back feet, the feet. So open your feet a little bit apart, Diana. Good. Breathe. 
push the right fingertips down and draw energy up the arm with confidence so that shoulder blade slides on the upper back. That's what you know. This holds the heart. It's the, it's the boundary. And then within that, now spin your heart from the pelvis extent down the legs, curl the heart open as you twist. Push the right thigh back and lift the left waistline away from the floor to create more space. Very good, inhale, come back to center. And then exhale, go to the other side. Left fingertips outside your mat, come up on your fingertips, bend your left elbow to the side and thread your right arm under. Lower the right <coughs> shoulder to the floor. So bring the right shoulder a little bit more forward, Cindy. Cindy, yeah, there you go. Good. Push the right left fingertips down and draw up into the armpit. Armpit moves back. Outer shoulder blade slides on the upper back. Confidence. You know who you are. And that's not going to change. The, config, the constellation might change. The way you see yourself might change. Now keep, hold on to that. And from the pelvis, extend. Root the legs. Curl the heart more open. Surrender. What, how can I grow? Inhale, come back to center. And exhale, lay down on your back. Legs up towards the front of the room. <coughs> flex your feet and bring, uh, extend your legs out, flex your feet and bring your feet to, uh, to touch. Supta Paragustasana, leg straight, no leg straight, sorry. <laughs> So actually relax the feet for a moment and just feel your whole body on the floor. Everything that connects is this opportunity to recognize the potential, what can be known in the universe. It's a lot and we're not, at Ikara, it's about tapping into that, but we're never going to know probably everything that can be known. So it's, it's not like we're going to stress about it. Like we have a checklist, oh, did I get my part done today? It's just what's available. How can I grow? Breathe into the back ribs to expand into that. Then flex the feet and bring the legs together. And inhale your right knee up into the chest. Interlace your hands behind your hamstring. Keep the right uh, knee bent for a moment, good. And if you pull, now you're pulling it towards your chest, now bring it away from your chest so the knees over your hip more, good. Flex the right foot. Now uh, keep the right leg like this and now root the left thigh more fully into the floor. So the groin soften, there's a little more arch in the lower back here. Now keep that, extend the right leg straight, Root the tailbone down in the space you created without flattening the lower back, just creating length and openness here. And then from the pelvis, extend through the heels. Ex push the hamstrings into your hands so you feel that opening, that surrendering. It's organic. It happens because you're doing the practice. Push into me more. Take some nice deep breaths here. Push into me. Mm. Ujjayi Pranayama. Exhale the right leg down. Inhale, bring the left knee into the chest. Insulate your fingers behind the hamstring. So go a little low on the hamstring here so you get to the meaty part. Flex your feet. Bring your left knee over your hip. Now from the feet, pull up into the pelvis. So you pull energy up into the pelvis through the legs. Muscles hug more to the bone. Turn your right toes a little more uh, straight up towards the ceiling. So Cindy, you can turn in the right foot a little bit. Right foot, there, good. 
press that right thigh down and now groin soft and down towards the floor. It's a little arch in the lower back here. Keep it, but root the tailbone to a space here. Now extend the left leg, keeping all of this. Extend out through the leg bones from the pelvis. Push through those heels. It, legs grow longer. Even extend to the crown of the head. Bring the shoulders down towards the floor and the heart can flourish here. When we surrender, it's again, it's like we, we're willing to give something up. Doesn't mean we have to become victims of a situation. We just are willing to look at it in a different light, from a different angle. Exhale the left leg down. Now extend the arms above your head. Pull to the core from the, of the pelvis, from the feet and the arms, the hands and the feet. So everything gets more integrated, keeping that now extend, stretch out, stretch out. And then exhale, release. Bring the arms down alongside your body, palms up. Let the feet fall out naturally to the side. Shavasana, <coughs> final relaxation. So allow your body to fully rest, fully surrender. Every muscle is now letting go. We're just being in the space of potential, the heart wide open the breath pulsating. Just before you go fully there, just double check that your jaw is relaxed, that your tongue is just falling back into your mouth. Anywhere else you notice any gripping, just know it's just a little place you're stuck. You see if you can, e with ease, just let that relax.
Keep in your breath. Slowly begin to move the toes and the fingers and stretch your arms out in any way that feels good. Bring your knees into your chest. And slowly roll to your right side. On an inhale, slowly return to sit. Find yourself a comfortable seat and close your eyes, rest your hands. Before we conclude the practice today, we're just gonna take one minute in silence. slowly bring your hands in front of your heart. Adhikara is the practice of beginner's mind. The willingness to open to all potential knowledge in the universe. The practice of yoga invites us to ask, where am I stuck so I can grow and tap into this potential? As we practice, we hold on to what we already know with confidence. So we don't, it's not a victimization when we then surrender ourselves, surrender our hearts to receive a deeper knowledge about ourselves and the world. Let's conclude this practice with the sound of Om. Inhale. Om. Namaste.